Welcome to the Phase World Podcast. Engaging conversations that cross the boundaries between business, art, and the digital world. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Phase World Podcast. Remember that this is a place where you can discover stories of everyday hero from martial artists to designers, actors, speakers, authors, and all the show notes, tools, and resources are readily available on my website at phaseworld.com. You're now listening to episode number 18, I guess. This is conversation part two with Chris Heinen. In this part, Chris opens up about his adventure from ROTC to skydiving to rock climbing and many, many more. Chris also speaks to the fear he had during his first skydive. Now keep in mind that he has registered now over 1,200 skydives. That's not a number I could possibly imagine. I have personally never anticipated skydiving ever in my life. And perhaps after this interview, just like me, you will see the skydiving crowd slightly differently than you did before. I hope you all enjoy this conversation with Chris, but make sure you don't skip out on part one either. That was a much longer interview right before this, where Chris opened up a very authentic exchange on how he became a developer, where he seeked for help. And you certainly give a lot of credits to his mentors out there. I hope they're all listening to this podcast. So tune in and please welcome part two with Chris Heinen. So uh, very glad that it took us um, actually a little less than an hour uh, to talk about your travel, your work. And uh, you have a line of hobbies and sports, and that has been sort of a recurring theme <laughs> throughout. Uh, how do you stay even keeled, balanced, uh, creative as a developer? Quickly touch base upon the list of hobbies you have before we dive into the individual ones or the ones that excite you the most. Skydiving, base jumping, rock climbing, fly fishing, cycling, kiteboarding, woodworking, and the fact that when you got to the, um, the beginning of your career, you went to, I think it was a scholarship with uh, Army um, ROTC. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's really fascinating, not to mention in skydiving, you've taken, <laughs> you've, you've brought it to a whole new level to actually be a coach. Mm-hmm. So which one of the hobbies, I see skydiving at the very top. Um, right. how, how did you get started? I know you have a really intimate group of friends. Your wife is very involved as well. And <laughs> that that could probably be a whole new podcast <laughs> session. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I started out, um, you know, growing up, I was, you know, ever since I was six, I imagined myself going off into the military. Um, that was my career path ever since I was six. I was going to be an officer, special forces, Navy <laughs> SEAL. Like I was like so gung-ho. I just wanted to be like in the military. Um, and I ended up doing uh, ROTC in college. And through ROTC as a freshman, um, I was sent to do advanced training at Army Airborne School. Mm, um, I see. <laughs> which was which was amazing experience. You know, I I did really well my freshman year, mm-hmm. um, and as kind of like a reward for doing so well as a cadet, um, they decided to send me to the school as a freshman, which they don't typically do. Mm, and it wound up being freshman, wow. it wound up being the thing that probably uh, got me out of the military. <laughs> um, n- not because I had a bad experience. On the contrary, I had like just like a life changing experience. Um, mm-hmm skydiving um through airborne school i got hooked on skydiving which kind of got me into civilian jumping i got my civilian license Mm. um and the people that i met you know going back to what we talked about before Mm -hmm. you know getting out of your comfort zone and meeting people from all walks of life um different ages that Mm. really opened my eyes to what was important to me you know you're in skydiving you have people like i said that you know, they, they, this is their living and they do it like they're just getting by mm-hmm. jumping out of planes because they're passionate about it. Mm-hmm. You have people that are ex-military. You have type A personalities that own their own companies. Mm-hmm. You have like the full range of people. Mm-hmm. And just my experiences with 
such such amazing people mm -hmm. um, kind of opened my eyes to what was really important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been living my life since the age of six with a very focused goal for what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, but I never stopped to think about like what really makes me happy. Like who am I? Mm -hmm. And art, creating, teaching, mm. you know, making things mm -hmm. was something that was really important to me. Um, and I have been overlooking that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like took a step back, looked at my life, and uh, that's where I changed my um, kind of yeah. path to being industrial designer from being mm -hmm. an engineer. Mm -hmm. I ended up um, getting out of ROTC, becoming a, a skydiving coach part-time during mm -hmm. the summers, mm -hmm. and eventually started along a path mm -hmm. of being a, a creator and a teacher, mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't be happier. That's an amazing journey. And I must ask, uh -huh. overcoming fear. <laughs> you never mentioned that. I think you're too comfortable. Um, but I was wondering, the first time when you uh, practicing skydiving with another coach, mm -hmm. was, was fear any part of the equation? I know you've done so much. Do you remember fearful or... Um, well, definitely at the very beginning, um, there's some fear there because you're, you're putting yourself in an extremely stressful situation and you're not sure how it's going to turn out. Mm -hmm. Um, but over time you, you get more and more confident with the equipment yourself, the people around you. Um, there's a great deal of trust to the people that you're, you're jumping with. Mm -hmm. And that kind of adds to that bond and that kind of community that you find in skydiving, probably in Taekwondo, mm -hmm. that like trust that you, it, it's hard to find elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how many times in were you feeling like it just like put on your shoes or something? I mean, how, you know, Oh, or uh, it, it starts to feel <laughs> normal, <laughs> normal. <laughs> um, what can do in your living room? I mean, I, I have, um, or like around 1200 skydives. Um, so <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it did get pretty normal towards the end. I mean, you, you have to be careful because, um, you don't want to get relaxed. I mean, it, it is mm. a very dangerous thing that you're doing. Mm. Um, and it's very easy. You, you, you'll see people just get very relaxed with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's where you have a malfunction, you have an issue. Um, so you have to be like very careful and vigilant, like with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, that fear of, oh my goodness, I'm jumping out of a plane, mm -hmm. subsides. That's, mm -hmm. And that's not what's, what it's about either. Like that adrenaline rush isn't what uh, skydiving is about. It's more the, the community and um, kind of that, that zen moment mm -hmm. of nothing else existing except for small movements in your body to move through the sky, mm -hmm. fly through clouds like it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I Amazing! Mean, you can't it's, you can't describe it to anything else. I, I typically try to get that feeling through yoga or running or, right. or swimming. Yoga, rock climbing, like <laughs> like just doing meditation. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's funny to think of skydiving as a form of meditation, but it absolutely is, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's like a, a, a means of uh, like it's meditation on steroids because <laughs> your your body is almost going into like a flight or fight flight fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. um, and you have this like heightened sense of awareness of things that are going around you. N you're not worrying about work. You're not worrying about traffic. You're not worrying about <laughs> traffic. You're not worrying about like, oh, there's going to be a lot of traffic. Or <laughs> you're not worrying about like relationships or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just you and the sky and, and nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, and I've definitely got that sensation from, you know, other sports and experiences. Mm -hmm. But I will say with skydiving, there's nothing like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I, you know, when people meet you in person, mm -hmm. actually it didn't really surprise me after finding out that you're very into this. And I do see someone like you who would come across not just simply brave, but uh -huh. someone who meditates, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. um, and be at ease with things and be comfortable with yourself. Um, even through, you know, your professional life, uh, that in turn actually makes my uh, job much easier but I was wondering, as a coach, that you've taken other people onto this plane, strapped them like uh, behind your back. I'm maybe describing in like. <laughs> well, that, that would be that would actually be a, an instructor. So uh -oh. there's like there's different there's a whole process in order to get certified in skydiving. Mm -hmm. You'll have your you know, tandem instructors, AFF instructors, coaches. Uh -huh. There's a whole series of different people that kind of help teach you to become a safe skydiver, teach you the basics. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, like what I did in particular was I would do video work for like, competition <laughs> teams. And then I would also do coaching 
which is I never actually have anyone strapped to me, uh-huh. uh, which is a lot of pressure, and I have a lot of respect for <laughs> those that can do that because you have a lot more weight and you have uh, it's it's difficult to steer. You know, oh. you're landing with like an extra like couple hundred pounds. You're you're responsible for someone's life because they're strapped to you. Um, oh man! For me, I I was a uh, I did coach. I was a coach, so um, I was not strapped to the person. What I would do. Uh, was kind of safely teach someone how to jump with uh, another person. Mm-hmm. So at this point in the their kind of process to become a licensed skydiver, mm-hmm. they had already jumped out tandem, so they're attached to somebody and they know what it feels like. They're not freaking out. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next step is then they jump on the instructor that kind of holds onto their side. Mm-hmm. And that instructor teaches them basic maneuvers, how to turn, um, getting comfortable in the sky. And after they've gotten comfortable and they show uh, that they have the ability to control turns and deploy their parachute, I would work with them to safely jump with another person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if you've ever seen the, the, there's a James Bond movie where he like jumps out of the plane uh-huh. uh, after somebody else and dives down to them and they meet up in the sky. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's similar to what I would do. I would teach people how to exit the plane after myself. Um, and, you know, teach them to dive down to me, dock on me, slowly approach, turn, and just safely jump with somebody else. And once they Uh were comfortable enough jumping with other people, Mm. there's a couple other qualifications, but uh, at that point, you become a licensed skydiver. So how do you actually make that happen without Uh getting overly technical? Uh, One of the fears I always see, like, for people who've never um, tried, even tried skydiving before, Mm -hmm. I am scared to death. I'm completely open about this, scared to death. One of the things I would imagine, right, like one of the fears I had is like somebody approaching me with a parachute. What if our parachutes get tangled up, (laughs) malfunction? How do you Uh teach people to kind of approach you without all those crazy things that happen around you? Well, the the initial, so there's different, so you're describing getting tangled up in a parachute. Um, (laughs) As a coach, we wouldn't be that, we wouldn't be that close to each other under canopy. This is in free fall, so we would jump out of the plane and meet up just by controlling your mm. you know, subtle movements in your body. Um, so in terms of, I mean, uh, we could do a whole other podcast on <laughs> body flight, um, but because there's there's so many different disciplines within skydiving, different types of control. Okay. Um, yeah, I could I could talk to you for hours about that. Mm, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, every time my taekwondo friends uh-huh. and I get together with their spouses, their friends, uh-huh. and everybody's shaking their heads, it's like, stop talking about TKD already. Um, <laughs> But, uh, it's passion, yeah. but 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 control in the air. Um, uh-huh. It's it's uh, on the the physics level. It's all about drag and controlling drag and surface area. Mm-hmm. So you can contain and also like kind of the pitch of your body. So just by controlling the angle that you're facing mm-hmm. or which way your kind of shoulder is leaving, mm-hmm. these kind of subtle movements will allow you to move across the sky. You know, you mm-hmm. you make yourself big. There's more drag. You move slowly. Mm-hmm. You get into like a tiny little cannonball you're going to fall a lot faster. Mm. Um, If you do a pencil dive and it's basically the surface area of the bottom of your feet, you're going to go over 200 miles an hour. Wow. On your belly, you're going to go 120. So there's a full range of speed um, that you can accomplish just by changing the angle of your body. And with experience, you're able to have better balance to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and things become more natural. Uh, Like you understand without thinking how to move your body to get to a certain place in the sky. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a really interesting philosophical side to Mm -hmm. all this as well. Uh, The reason, I think, of course, you have to go through training in order to do do all this. I can imagine, Mm -hmm. we'll have another podcast, but I can imagine (laughs) a lot of the actions and decisions are counterintuitive, Mm -hmm. you know, when it's um, how do I describe it? I'm not a I'm not a great snowboarder or a skier mm-hmm. per se. I'm very passionate about snowboarding, but I notice especially when my body tenses up, when I start to freak out, when I go faster than I, I should be going, uh-huh. that's when I go even faster. <laughs> you know, that's that's same, uh, same thing. Like any <laughs> any sport, you're gonna have that. You know, the, mm-hmm. the most important thing I feel like in a majority of sports is breathe. Mm-hmm. relax because as soon as you get tense and you get tight and stiff that's mm-hmm. where if you're snowboarding you start going fast if you're mm-hmm. skydiving you're going to go into an uncontrollable <laughs> spin like oh so you, 
you need to find a way within yourself to relax and breathe, mm. even in an intense situation like and that. Especially, maybe, perhaps especially when in an intense oh, situation, yep. yeah. So, <laughs> ooh, I'm just getting... Um, one of the things I thought, someone like yourself, very comfortable with very little fear, when you work with people very new to skydiving, uh-huh. is there ever a moment where you play that shrink, you know, psychologist role almost. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about that for a second. Yeah. <laughs> and because, I mean, I, I had great coaches that kind of taught me to relax. You know, I, mm-hmm. my AFF instructor, so, you know, describing the process of doing a tandem where you're strapped to somebody, AFF is where you're no longer, you know, physically strapped to the person, but they're jumping with you. Um, during that phase of, you know, I maybe had like 10 jumps at the time. Um, I always remember, you know, being really tense and nervous and scared. I remember Mm. being in free fall with my instructor. Um, and he just looked at me, I mean, this, this instructor, he's got thousands of skydives. He's very comfortable. Um, and he sees me tense, nervous, and he just flies up to me, looks me right in the eyes. Um, and in skydiving, you use hand signals, just Mm. like, you know, scuba diving, you can't talk to each other. So you have to use hand signals to like, there's a relaxed hand signal. There's like different... Um, like more legs, you know, move your arms. Uh huh. So he came, he flew up to me, gave me a relaxed um, hand signal, mm-hmm. and then proceeded to um, the hand <laughs> signal. He called it eating plum pudding. <laughs> what does that <laughs> he mean? flies right in front of me and he just <laughs> pretends like he has a like a big <laughs> bowl of like plum pudding. He's sitting there smiling, completely <laughs> relaxed. Made me laugh. Oh and like, my god! If you can imagine being in like extremely such a stressful situation and someone's able to make you laugh, uh, and instantly, as soon as I laughed and smiled, like everything was fine. I was stable. Mm-hmm. I was relaxed. I wasn't rigid like you, like snowboarding where you start going fast. I was <laughs> loose and relaxed, and like that was it. That helped me. And I would always try and teach people the same thing when I was coaching. You know, just relax. Have fun. You're jumping out of a plane. This is awesome. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is <laughs> this awesome. This is like you're doing something that not a lot of people will ha- are fortunate enough to be able to do, mm-hmm. um, or would ever want to do because it's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's fun. Like, have fun. Relax. Smile. Mm-hmm. And, and as soon as you can relax and smile and enjoy what you're doing, you're able to accomplish a lot more. You're not tense. Mm-hmm. You're not fighting it. Just kind of relax and go with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is amazing. About the the. Eating plum pudding thing. Maybe that's a we could do a little recording of that gesture when our projects go sideways. Maybe we should just walk up to people yeah. at their desks and start doing that. And that's and that's like uh, like life lessons from skydiving. Like just relax and like mm. whether you're stumped right trying to write some code or you know you're going cycling or you're doing some kind of hobby and you're getting stressed out. Mm-hmm. Just remember, like relax, have fun. Mm. You know. You're not going to be able to accomplish the task at hand mm-hmm. if you're stressed out, tense, like worried about it. Mm-hmm. You know, just relax. Yeah, <laughs> just just relax. <laughs> just relax. One of the things I realized maybe challenging the relax during skydiving mm-hmm. is you know people have the tendency of closing their eyes mm-hmm. when they feel like something you know is going to happen, like right. a very horrific event. Don't be tense. Don't close your eyes. Don't you're close your eyes. Something. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep your eyes. I mean, it's yeah. definitely a requirement to keep your eyes open at all times. <laughs> But I, oh man, one last question about skydiving. Uh-huh. How do you lose your sense of sort of your spatial awareness? You know, do you, because how much of that could you control looking? I don't even know which way's up or even down anymore, right? You're looking <laughs> at well, the it, ground. It, it, it is because there's, I mean, there's different orientations that you skydive too. Like you'll, Sometimes I'll be on my belly so you can look down at the ground. Mm-hmm. Other times I'll be standing on my feet or on my head. So I'll be upside down. So the world, the earth is below you and the sky is above you. Oh, wow. So the, your whole perspective has changed. You know, there are so many different ways you can be flying and disoriented. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's very few points of reference too, unless you have clouds. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no real point of reference to see how fast you're going or um, the ground at that point. It's, it's so far away that visually... Like people who have fear of heights aren't really afraid because mm. it's like it looks almost like a picture. It's like it's so far away. Like if you were to be in an airplane mm. at thirty thousand feet and look out the window, your heart's not going to start beating fast because you're afraid you're going to you know fall out and and like falling off a ladder. Mm-hmm. It's so far away that your brain doesn't even register the height at that point. Mm. Um, so 
your brain not being able to register height, um, no real points of reference. Mm. It, it is it can be disorienting, um, and you can lose track of how high you are, where you are in the sky. Mm. If you're drifting, um, you have to look out for other air traffic, uh, other oh. planes flying in the sky. Oh. There's a lot of things you need to be aware of, mm. um, and it just kind of comes with experience. You're able to increase your awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have tools such as you know, like altimeters and audible devices that will beep to remind you if mm. you're at a certain altitude. Mm. So there's, there's devices that will help you, but it just takes time to get comfortable in that mm-hmm. environment. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And, um, I've taken a lot of your time, but really interesting stories. And if the audience is interested in skydiving, especially people who are so fascinated, but may or may not try in the short term, uh-huh. we might dive into that topic even more so but before I wrap up I was wondering what are the the next extreme sport you know you're (laughs) interested in sports diet or anything along that line or lifestyle um, experiments that uh, you're thinking about or planning or not planning at this moment is it too Um, soon (laughs) I really enjoy woodworking Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've been uh, I I spent a lot of time last winter um Doing some woodworking, mm-hmm. building out furniture for um, for our house, uh, and I'd like to continue doing that. You know, you spend so much time looking at a computer screen. Um, it's nice to actually use your hands to build something. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things I'm lo- really looking forward to this winter is um, building more furniture. Mm-hmm. You know, trying to increase my skill, use fancier woods <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm, that I'm not I'm not afraid to ruin. Um, yeah, just building things. That's mm-hmm. that's most important to me. And where are you getting your supplies from? Uh, like various places. I mean, I have some lumber yards uh, near where I live, and um, I've kind of built up a whole tool set. Um, mm-hmm. So I have all the tools, just need the materials and the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much. I'm going to ask that question, even though I told you other people's answers. What uh-huh. would you look back 10 years or so to say to your 18 to 20-year-old self? Um, what is your what is your advice to yourself? My advice to myself, um, well, th- well, at that point, I had many expectations for how life was supposed to be, what I was supposed to be, the career I was supposed to have. Mm-hmm. And just relax, you know. Life mm-hmm. life is full of expectations, um, and they're never going to quite align with reality, mm-hmm. uh, for better or for worse. Mm-hmm. So stop spending your time expecting something to happen, wanting something to happen. And just let life happen. Because mm-hmm. um, I'm in a very different place right now than where I was when I was 18. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really happy. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't through plan. Mm-hmm. So stop planning and just start living your life. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Mm-hmm. This is uh, super fun. And <laughs> I hope we do a another part of this again. Yeah, of course. To listen to more episodes of the Face World podcast, please subscribe on iTunes or visit faceworld.com. That is F E I S W O R L D, where you can find show notes, links, other tools, and resources. You can also follow me on Twitter at Face World. Until next time, thanks for listening.